Okay, so it's a pleasure uh, to be here and uh, to update you on, on Terra. We have so many developments and so little time, so I want to jump right in. Uh, I will share uh, some of my slides that highlight some of the latest updates uh, on, uh, on the latest developments on Terra. So I'm going to focus on uh, what I call sort of the economics of Terra. Uh, and so I will point out uh, a couple of uh, new things. So in particular, I want to start with those of you that haven't really experienced Terra uh, so far, and uh, I want to tell you basically what you are missing on. Uh, and so I will sort of explain a little bit of the uh, what's exactly Terra, what's the underlying technology, at least briefly. Uh, and then I will uh, talk about what are the news about the technology with respect to, for example, uh, last year. And then I will dive into two main topics that are close to my heart. The first one is uh, an update on Chai, which is the platform we use on the, on the payment system, because that's really what provides us with a lot of uh, data and information about users and how users uh, interact with uh, uh, Terra. And then I will, uh, uh, I will show you and discuss uh, a new product and a new alliance uh, that I think are going to propel uh, the future of uh, Terra. So let me start with what's really Terra. So Terra is a blockchain payment network uh, that is uh, mainly focused uh, in the Asian e-commerce market. It basically rebuilds completely the payment uh, stack on the blockchain. And the idea is to deliver uh, unparalleled efficiency to both merchants and partners, as well as to customers. Um, I will show you that uh, Terra basically uh, is able to address two of what I believe are the major drawbacks of uh, the blockchain and cryptocurrencies so far. One was price volatility and the other one is lack of real uh, world use case. Uh, the reason for this is because obviously price volatility, Terra is a uh, uh, stable coin and the lack of real world use case, so we have basically adoption of figure it out. Uh, in fact, basically, it's used as payment already across uh, several merchants uh, in Asia. So let me just uh, draw your attention to some of the mechanics that really are driving uh, the mechanism behind uh, Terra. And so to be a stable coin, uh, uh, in contrast to other stable coins out there, and for example, also to the Libra project uh, that was basically based uh, on reserves, what we are gonna do instead is uh, uh, all based on algorithmically adjusting the money supply. It seems very complicated, but there's nothing more than what central banks do every day. And uh, it's very intuitive. In some sense, if we have a change in, uh, in Bitcoin demand, there is zero adjustment on the supply side. Instead for Terra, as we experience a shift in demand, because for example, there are more and more merchants that adopt Terra as a mean of payment, what we're going to do is adjust the supply accordingly. And so as the price of Terra increases, the protocol issues more Terra. As the price of Terra decreases, because for example, we are experiencing a down, we might experience a downturn or a recession, the protocol also buys back Terra. And this makes sure of keeping the value of Terra constant across the business cycle. The other thing that uh, I want to point out is that uh, there, are, there isn't just Terra as the stable coin, but there is another important component of Terra, which is really our sort of uh, uh, equity in the system, which is Luna. Luna is basically the uh, ecosystem collateral token. So the way in which we can think about this is every time a transaction with Terra takes place, a fee is directed to Luna. And this transaction fee is dynamic, because it changes with the market conditions and is calibrated to ensure full collateralization. So that basically there is a consistent stream of transaction fees that go into Luna. And uh, that these transaction fees are then rewarded to those who stake their Luna. The value then of Luna is used to collateralize Terra during contractionary uh, cycles. And so also provides another backdrop for uh, stability. What we believe is the main value proposition, and I will show you that uh, indeed there are many that uh, agree with us that this is super important for both customer and merchant, 
is that uh, uh, Terra is used on the e-commerce platforms, new money is printed to maintain price stability, as for the mechanism that I just described, and this growth is then returned to users as discounts. This is super uh, important because these discounts are a way for us to both attract uh, users as well as make sure that uh, the blockchain is significantly more efficient for the merchant uh, than, for example, existing payment options like, for example, setting up a POS with a, uh, a credit card company. So the, in, in the end, this discount model really serves as a way of providing uh, also fiscal policies or you know, stimulus for the Terra economy. Because as there is more demand for Terra, because for example, we onboard the new merchants, uh, we have the supply of Terra increases uh, and there, are, there is then a new money supply that gets reinvested as discount, the fuel even more uh, a demand for Terra in the, in the future. And so there is growth that really drives growth. Okay. So this is basically the main uh, takeaway of uh, how the Terra uh, works and is, has been working since uh, last year. So now let me just highlight uh, a couple of news with respect to what uh, has been going on in the, in the last few months about the technology. The first one is the integration of smart contracts uh, uh, in, the, in the chain. In, 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 um, Terra basically is going to be integrating a multi-chain smart contracts that are developed by a Cosmo Wasm team. So the important thing about these smart contracts is that uh, they can be run on multiple chains, making use of the inter-blockchain uh, inter communication protocol. They are secure because uh, they are secure with most of the known attack vectors that have been evidenced by Ethereum closed by design. And then they can also leverage the speed of Wasm and the power of Rust to perform any algorithm you desire. And so this is sort of the first uh, technological step that opens up the possibility for developers to come in and build on Terra whatever they want. We also sort of moved uh, one step uh, forward towards uh, uh, decentralization. And in particular on June 5th, so just a few weeks ago, uh, Terraform Labs spun down uh, the uh, two validators, uh, Golia and Marine. And this is to basically continue the, to contribute towards a greater decentralization in the system. And so we are more and more uh, uh, decentralized in this community. Now, uh, one more thing that uh, I want to highlight is that uh, from the point of view of uh, the validators, uh, Terra has been a great deal. So just in the last six weeks, Terra has paid out $820,000 to the validators in the network in real non-dilutive rewards. So just to give you a sense of the growth rate of these rewards, so the rewards on Terra grew over uh, the 58 weeks since uh, the launch at an average rate of 17%. So, you know, growth rate is awesome, but what's the total? So even the total uh, is extremely high. In fact, this brings the total paid out network rewards to over 3.3 million. Just to give you a sense of how we compare with respect to uh, whatever else in the market, we are just number three. So Luna, which is the Terra Native Token investment token that I mentioned before, is just number three after Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, with more than three and a half million dollars paid out to uh, validators. Okay, so now I wanna shift gear a little bit and start showing you what has been happening uh, in, on, on Chai. So first of all, Chai users have reached 1.6 million users with 1 billion annual run rate. And more importantly, you know, one evidence that Chai has been extremely successful in terms of onboarding new and new users over time, they are number, Chai is number one app downloaded. In terms of the growth rate and the comparison between total users and active users, what we plotted here is just the last quarter, the last three months, from basically mid-April to mid-June. And we have basically total users going from 1.3 to 1.6. So we are basically adding 100,000 users every month. 
and also the active users uh, are incre significantly increasing uh, over time. So this is just to, uh, to, to show basically the success of Chai and uh, uh, Terra as a payment uh, uh, mechanism. So it's not just the users uh, that have been uh, uh, more and more uh, excited about uh, Terra, but we also have seen uh, an increasing number of integration and uh, overall volume um, on, uh, on Terra. So we started a launch with just Timon, and then we added the 24 merchants over time, reaching the $24 billion. So we just in the last uh, couple of quarters, we added a few of the uh, most important uh, uh, merchants. Uh, so for example, we added uh, We Make Price, which is uh, Korea's number two e-commerce platform. They just have uh, you know, over $5 billion in volume. We also added uh, uh, Korea's number one hospitality app. They have around $2 billion in online volume and more than 10 million users. Um, and they have more than 400,000 hotels in, uh, all over the countries. And then we also added uh, one offline merchant, uh, so the number one convenience store CU, that now uh, you know, uh, integrated with uh, Chai as well. Just to give you a sense of how the payments are split among all these merchants, uh, Timon is a quarter of the overall uh, payments, but uh, what is uh, in, in, uh, incredibly good for us is also that uh, two of the more recently added merchants, Enolia and We Make Price, also constitute a significant portion of the overall payments. And this obviously is evidence that the new users that we are onboarding are particularly active on Terra. In fact, we are adding more and more active users. So if we are sort of looking at from the lunch to today, we are talking about almost 700,000 uh, active users uh, as, of day, or as of today. Now, one big question about uh, the acquisition uh, of these users is how expensive these users have been for us. And so one nice thing we can do is actually looking uh, into the economics of uh, acquiring more and more uh, customers for Chai. And in particular, uh, one, uh, um, one of the main costs uh, for uh, customer acquisition is the promotion rate that we have to offer these customers to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to basically to convince them to use uh, Chai. And uh, here we are plotting these trends. We are plotting uh, the uh, bold dash line is the transaction volume trend, and the gray dash line is the promotion rate trend. What we see is basically that the correlation between these two is declining. In fact, while transaction volume has been increasing significantly, especially in the last few months, what we observe here is the promotion rate has tended to actually drop significantly. And so this means that all the nice graphs that I showed you before in terms of the growth in active users in the last few months uh, is great not only because we have more and more people using uh, uh, chai, but uh, each one of them costs us significantly less. And in fact, if you also formally look at the correlation between uh, the weekly promotion rate and the transaction volume, uh, been, you know, has been uh, as high as 24% uh, in the past, especially at the beginning when we were trying uh, to uh, attract as, as many customers as possible, but now it's actually lower and it's significantly lower at uh, less than 14%. So this is also very reassuring of the fact that we are becoming more and more uh, profitable as we add the users that cost us less. In fact, overall, if you look at not only the promotion rate, but overall customer acquisition cost, uh, you see that uh, the customer acquisition cost has been trending down uh, significantly since the beginning of uh, 2020, uh, while the customers acquired have seen no actually flattening, but has been actually significantly increasing over the last few months, which is the gray dotted line. Now, one more thing that uh, I want to show you is that since we have the opportunity to actually look at how users uh, integrate across different merchants, uh, we also point, use this information to actually understand a little bit more about the spending pattern of different users. 
And what we see is that the customers that are uh, particularly active across multiple merchants are also the ones for which we have to offer uh, a lower discount to begin with. So the, here we are plotting basically the discount spending uh, per transaction over the number of merchant users used. And as you can see, basically, if I use just one merchant, it's probably because I'm responding to a particular and significant uh, offer. While uh, as soon as I start using two merchants, these uh, discount rates drop dramatically uh, and they basically go lower and lower as I become more and more active across merchants. This is important because uh, this basically highlights the fact that there, is, uh, that there is a need and there is also value in cross-pollination of users across uh, different merchants. Because once they get used uh, to uh, use the same platform across, uh, across uh, uh, merchants, they become also better uh, uh, users for us. And uh, the, the good news is that uh, starting in the fall of 2019, the share of customers who use multiple merchants has been skyrocketing. So now more than uh, 25, up to 30% of uh, customers are using multiple merchants at the same time. So this is good on one end for uh, um, the uh, discount for every transaction, which I showed you uh, before, that these customers basically uh, are experiencing lower discounts, but they use the, the uh, chai across multiple merchants. But uh, this is also good news for us in terms of retention rate. In particular, uh, one other thing that is very different across uh, users, once we compare how they behave across different merchants, is that the ones that use only one merchant are also the ones that are the toughest uh, to retain. We are sort of a, a little bit over 50% one month retention rate for those customers. But uh, we are significantly higher for, uh, uh, we are significantly higher for uh, the ones that use multiple merchants. In fact, uh, once you use more than uh, three uh, merchants, you are a retention rate above 80%. Now, one more thing that I want to show you is that uh, if you look at the retention rate across cohorts, so how they look, how the customers that were acquired at the very beginning compared to the customers that were acquired over the, the next few months, uh, basically we see that uh, still the retention rate is uh, pretty high because it goes from uh, 60 to 70 percent. Uh, and so that's also good in the sense that uh, that reassures us that the customers that we're acquiring right now, they are not worse customers than the ones that we acquired at the beginning. Obviously, the ones that we acquired right away are the most enthusiast and they are easier uh, to retain, but the differential is not uh, um, so worrisome. The other thing that uh, I want to mention is that uh, now we allow for top-ups, so the possibility to basically put money uh, into your account with uh, WeChai, and uh, there are more and more customers that do this. So they are not just uh, one uh, transactions customer, but they basically use the account uh, significantly more. And in fact, over time, we have, uh, nowadays, we have uh, 500,000 customers that use the top-ups. So they actually put money into their account. Now, this was basically an overview of what's going, what's going on with uh, Chai. I want to mention uh, uh, one more thing, which is a new alliance for uh, Terra and what that means in terms of, for example, the next products. And in particular, we'll focus on one particular product called Anchor. So what's this uh, alliance? So the, there is a, uh, we informed a new interchain asset association. This is a collaborative uh, effort uh, to help research, fund, and create similar type of assets between Cosmos, Polkadot, and Terra. And this consortium of uh, uh, ecosystem participant research deeply on the potential economic possibility. They wanna create new applications and also educate uh, on the new monetary primitives dedicated to POS, proof of stake. And so this asset association will provide stewardship of the technical projects and standards and will promote the adoption of interchain technologies and foster the development of standard processes. So this is basically linked also to the new technologies that I mentioned at the very beginning in terms of the smart contracts that are working also across multiple uh, chains. 
one product that uh, will be announced uh, very uh, very soon is Anchor. This is aimed to be the gold standard for passive income on the blockchain. This is how the UI will look like probably for Anchor. And I wanna sort of mention uh, uh, sort of what it is and how that, uh, that works. So, but before doing that, let me just uh, uh, pause for a second and state what we believe are the weaknesses of the current DeFi decentralized finance system right away. So while DeFi, DeFi have been revolutionary in creating a, a fully decentralized crypto money markets, there has been one big drawback, which, is, which has been the volatility of the interest rates. And the volatility of the interest rates have been, have been basically the big obstacle uh, to be used uh, as to make these uh, money markets be used as an household savings product. And so the, what we believe is that the DeFi mass adoption needs the creation of a fully decentralized uh, saving account that offers a dependable and stable APR. What is Anchor? Anchor is exactly a DeFi protocol that leverages the block reward of every major blockchain to power yields on stable coin deposits. So let me dive in uh, how this actually works. So as I said, basically Anchor is a savings protocol that accepts, for example, Terra deposits and allow instant withdrawals and pay depositor a low volatility interest rate. To generate yield, Anchor lends out deposits to borrowers who put down liquid stake proof of stake uh, uh, assets from major blockchains as collateral, what we call the B assets. So these B assets are basically the same as the assets that uh, you stake, uh, but are fungible and can be traded. Anchor then stabilizes the deposit interest rate by passing on a variable fraction of the B asset yield to the depositor. It guarantees the principal of the depositor by liquidating borrowers collateral via liquidation contracts and third party arbitrageurs. So if this reminds you of something, this might remind you of basically a bank. You have depositors who come in and deposit uh, their B assets and you have borrowers uh, who borrows uh, Terra, and in the middle you have Anchor who offer basically an interest rate and make sure that the, uh, the collateral is enough in order to uh, sustain an interest rate that is stable across cycles. And so we believe that the provision of this stable interest rate uh, to depositor is a necessary feature of any savings product that won't achieve actually broad appeal. Now, one, uh, one uh, uh, main limitation of the existing products that have been out there, like Compound and uh, Maker, has been the highly cyclical nature of, uh, uh, the, highly cyclical nature of the uh, uh, deposit uh, interest rates. And so behind offering low volatility yield, Anchor is an attempt to give the main street investor a single reliable rate of return across all blockchains. And the plethora of staking products, each with varying terms and yields, make DeFi very confusing, inaccessible, and unappealing to the average investors. Instead, Anchor, by aggregating these block rewards from all the major blockchains, is able to offer what we believe will be a benchmark interest rate. Just so that uh, sort of the, it, everything is clear in terms of how this works. For example, if I'm uh, uh, depositing uh, Biluna, um, uh, I'm getting an interest rate, and uh, I'm uh, pro, I'm stack, and um, I'm uh, if I'm borrowing, uh, if I'm borrowing uh, uh, Terra, then I'm actually paying uh, this interest rate, and the mechanism makes sure that uh, the ones that uh, are borrowing. Uh, uh, put down enough collateral to make sure that the interest rate that Anchor can offer to the depositor is uh, high enough and is stable uh, over time. So the in, in particular, the interest rate is determined algorithmically, as you know, exactly very similar in the same spirit uh, as the algorithm that uh, uh, propels the monetary policy underlying Terra, and is uh, really a function of uh, the borrowing demand and supply, or what we call the utilization ratio which is the fraction of Terra in the pool that has been borrowed. 
And so the interest rate will adjust automatically in order to meet the demand and supply and make sure that offering a stable interest rate. Why we believe this is superior, as I said, basically uh, hills on other DeFi protocols are mainly driven by short-term speculative demands for the underlying tokens. And we believe this is something that cannot really be stable. In particular, when speculative interest dies down, the APR will collapse, and with it, will bring down all the demand for uh, the savings product in the first place. While the fact that Anchor Yield uh, is powered by block rewards by the entire universe of the chain. This also allows us to be more diversified and uh, uh, I also offer a more dependable uh, APR. Now, let me conclude since I am uh, out of time. Overall, we think that uh, you know, cryptocurrency adoption has been measured with uh, as many changing goalposts as there have been with uh, decentralization. Uh, however, I think Terra has proven a path to broad adoption via e-commerce, and we expect to see many more applications to contribute to Terra growth. Let me mention uh, that we recently also published a Narvar Business Review article on the future of stable coin and what that might, uh, uh, that might entail for the e-commerce, together with uh, uh, Nicolas Platias, who is the head of research at uh, Terra, where we actually take a broader view of what's happening in the market and what is likely to happen uh, in the near future with the interaction of stable coins uh, and uh, e-commerce. Overall, I think a lot of exciting news and stay tuned. Thank you.